Hey guys, it's Derek Z. In this video, I'm gonna go over the general process of how to rehab your ankle sprain. The initial phases of the rehab for an ankle sprain is going to be involving pain management and swelling. Once you get the swelling down, your motion should be able to resume. However, the majority of the time, there's usually some swelling that lingers throughout the rehab process. So because of that, you don't want to let the ankle get stiff. So you want to keep it moving and ice as needed to help manage that swelling along with um, elevating and compressing the ankle. After an ankle sprain, there's a risk that the ankle will become stiff. And one of the first motions that people tend to lose is ankle dorsiflexion. Ankle dorsiflexion is very important mainly because it is involved in running, walking, going up down stairs, even sitting or standing. This is the ability of the ankle to flex up and that is an emotion that you absolutely cannot lose because if you lose that motion, then there's gonna be many other things that's gonna be hard to do, especially things that involves squatting. In order to get back ankle dorsiflexion, I usually have my patients do a simple banded mobility drill. This is a banded joint mobilization by yourself. So you just need a power band. You wanna hook it up to something that's stable. I'm using a squat rack. If you're at home, you can tie a knot at the end of the uh, power band and throw it at the other end of the door so you can keep that stable. Loop the band right underneath your ankle bone. So if you run your fingers down, there's gonna be two bones on the inside and on the outside. You make sure you want the band underneath that. So you want it to pull back this way to work on this uh, ankle joint. So in terms of the tension, pull it forward as far as you can where you generate a good amount of tension because you really want the force directed this way when you're going in to ankle close chain ankle dorsiflexion right over here. And I usually have people use um, like a piece of foam for the other side of the knee, but just for comfort's sake. And when I have people do this, it's about 10 to 20 times. And at the end there, I have them hold it for a little bit, making sure there's nice pressure pulling back um, onto the joint line, and then they go back. So this is a way I have people work on ankle dorsiflexion when we're doing this. And the other thing is when you're doing this, some common compensatory techniques that people tend to do is when they go forward, their heel tends to float up. If this floats up, then you're basically decreasing the angle of dorsiflexion. So you want maximal dorsiflexion. That's what you're looking for. But the minute your heel floats up, you lose some of that. So make sure when you're doing this, your heel stays down. And again, just 10 to 20 of these, couple second hold up at the end. Once the ankle becomes less irritable, you're gonna be able to do more. So once you get to that phase, then it's time to start training some of the muscles that are around it. So some of the basic exercises just to start off with is a simple heel raise to work on your gastrocnemius muscle, which is part of your calf. I usually have people bust out 30 of these and then having them do it with knees bent. I'm just holding on for balance sake here. So when your knees are bent, you're focusing on the soleus muscle, which is a deeper part of the calf. Those two are important to train um, because they're very powerful muscle groups. Um, and eventually it needs to translate over to jumping and running. Standing toe raises is an important exercise to work on the muscles that live on the front of the ankle and your shin. So nice way to do this is stand with your back against something stable and then just coming up. Traditionally, we would do this with a band, but the majority of the time, this is a harder exercise to do. The muscles that live on the top of your shin typically overpower the band. So when we're doing this, this is also a little bit more functional because you're also actively working on ankle dorsiflexion against gravity and your own body weight. If this becomes a little easy, the way to progress this is single leg, and then you're coming up. And when you're doing this, I typically, again, have my folks do 20 to 30 of these. The inverters and the everters are important muscles to work on, mainly because they help stabilize the ankle during dynamic activities. So in the initial phases, very important to do these banded ankle exercises. Eventually, we progress away from them. Ankle two ways with a band is a nice way to work the inverters and the everters. And when you're doing inversion, you can cross the leg and then you want to go in that way. Assuming the left ankle is 
the um, ankle that we're working on, or you can just hold it, and then you can just go in to work on the inverters, which are the muscles that live on the back. And then E version, or e, working your E verters, is um, make sure you put your band with some tension on the other leg, and then you're going out. So slow and control when you're doing this. And again, when I have people do this, it's about 20 to 30 times, depending on how irritable the ankle is. If the ankle is not as irritable, then I have them shoot for 30, sometimes even more. As the irritability of the ankle continues to decrease and your pain level continues to go down, it's very important to start training some basic movement patterns such as squatting, stair descent, single limb control. When we get to this phase of rehab, talking about restoring function to the ankle, very important to start actually doing the exercises on barefoot, mainly because you want to work on the muscles of the foot. So the shoes actually give you support, which then make your muscles work a little bit less. You want them to work maximally, mainly because of the rehab process. So we do all of, we do everything standing in with in barefoot. So in terms of squatting, feet about shoulder width apart. You're just coming down. You want to make sure when you're coming down, you get adequate ankle dorsiflexion. I'll do this on your side and you'll see what I mean. Um, and the other thing with when you're squatting is make sure your knees are going in line with your second toe. They're not going in, not caving in, nor are they going out a ton. If you go out too much, you actually end up putting pressure on the side of your foot and that's improper mechanics. So dorsiflexion is important in this part of squatting, mainly because you need the tibia to translate anteriorly. So what this means is when I'm squatting down, my shin is still kind of perpendicular to the ground. As the shin moves forward, it's gonna create dorsiflexion. If you don't have this angle, it's gonna become very difficult for you to squat. And typically what happens is people fall backwards because they can't, there's an actual mechanical block here or there's a joint restriction, or there's scar tissue, whatever the case may be, if you're lacking this motion, you won't be able to go down all the way, or you have tight calves. So whichever one it is, um, the range of motion needs to be restored in order for you to have functional movement patterns that are correct. Restoring stair descent is typically one of the biggest challenge because again, ankle dorsiflexion is going to be limited. So making the stair descent an exercise is another way to help restore that function. So you get on a box, this is a six inch box right over here. Let's just say we're working on the right one. The right one is the one that's been sprained. So with this, you can grab onto something for balance sake, but essentially what you're doing is you're stepping down and allowing the right to go to create dorsiflexion. And then from there, pushing back up, going back down with control. And again, if this is hard or this is painful, you can offload, hold on to something for balance sake. If not, then just go ahead and add the balance component to it. That way when you're going downstairs, you have the ability and the motion to be able to create dysfunction in the ankle. Single limb control is also another thing that you need to focus on to restore. So single limb control involves uh, balance and strength on that side. The, and we're not talking about just at the ankle, we're talking about the ankle, the knee, and the hip. So there's been a lot of research that's been coming out. Typically what happens is if there's an ankle sprain, let's just say there's an ankle sprain on the right side, there's pain. When that happens, the brain actually um, goes down and I wouldn't say shut off, but more so inhibit. Um, strength on the entire leg. So your entire right leg is going to be weaker compared to the other side. So that's why it's not just important to just strengthen the ankle, but you want to strengthen the knee and the hip as well too. So at the end of the day, you're basically strengthening that entire side. So some basic things to start off with is just single leg balance, barefoot, okay? Once this gets easy, hold it for about 30 seconds. If it gets easy, the way to progress it is just to close your eyes. And if you're gonna hold this for 30 seconds, then you would change the surface, making it a little bit more uneven and um, almost unexpected. So then the muscles can respond to the environment. One way to make an uneven surface is to stand on a piece of foam. I have an Airex foam here and you do the same thing. Stand on the foam, eyes open, 30 second hold. Stand next to something for stability sake. If you're tipping over, you can just grab on for safety. If this becomes easy, go ahead and close your eyes then you can feel the ankle work a little bit harder. Have your hand close to something that's stable um, for safety. And then again, 
you get to the point you can see my ankles working much harder here in this position with my eyes closed compared to my eyes if my eyes are open it's a lot easier so this is another way to help train the ankle um, and allow it to respond reactively to uneven surfaces once you get to the phase that irritability is very low, meaning your pain level is very low or there's minimal to no pain, then it's time to progress back into activities like running and sprinting. So if that is something that is part of your rehab goal and something that you want to return to doing, then plyometrics is a nice bridge to that. So when you do plyometrics, these are all bouncing and jumping type related exercises. I typically have people start off with something basic, just like an ankle bounce, some power squats, and then I progress them towards like a running interval in terms of starting with a light jog, jog for about three minutes, and then walk for about one minute and repeat that a series of three times to progress into some single limb loading. So angle bounces is a nice way to start off with plyometrics. This is basically just jumping on both your feet up and down stationary. I have them go forward and back, and then I have them go side to side. 30 seconds on each one. I typically have them go with barefoot if they can handle it in terms of tissue irritability. If their pain is minimal or low, then I have them go without, without shoes. But if they start to do it and it starts to become a little bit more painful, then I have them put on the shoes to provide a little bit of support to the ankle so the exercise can become a little bit more manageable. Power squats is another nice plyometric that I like to implement. It's basically just a jump with a squat. This is a nice way to start introducing loading on both sides, but rapidly. When you're doing the power squat, if it becomes painful, then what you can do is put on some supportive shoes to give your foot and ankle a little bit more support while you're doing the exercise. If not, then performing them um, barefoot would be the way to go. Usually the last phase is going to be single leg jumping. So once you master double leg jumping, single leg jumping is going to be the next phase. And then from there on out, you're progressing into back into recreational activities or sporting activities or running or whatever it may be. So the introductory to single leg jumping is just a simple single leg hop. I have usually um, 30 seconds of time when I have them do this. So I typically just grab a timer, set it for 30 seconds, and have people hop on one leg. After single limb hopping, I progress people into what's called a triple extension. So they're basically going a little bit deeper into the single leg hopping into more of a squatting position and then powering up from there. So this is probably one of the higher level activities. Also, I have people do this depending on their goal of the rehab. If they don't want to get back to any sporting activities or recreational activities, and they just want to be able to walk and go about their daily life. This is not typically something I implement into their uh, exercise program. After the higher level activities, especially the jumping ones, if your ankle is flared up, there's a little bit of pain or it's sore, feel free to use some ice for 10 to 20 minutes to it to help relieve some of that soreness or that pain. These exercises or this general guideline of what I do is typically what I do with my folks, depending on what they want to do. If they want to progress back to higher level activity, I kind of implement some of that jumping and running exercises to kind of get them back to that recreational dynamic sports, things like that. If not, then they don't really get to that phase and they just kind of stop that strengthening. I hope this video gives you some insight or some ideas for your own rehab process. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Other than that, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.